The Speaker recognizes Minority Floor Leader Grimal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to explain why I and many of my colleagues today are voting no on this bill. It's not that there's nothing good in this budget. There are indeed some positive elements here. One of them is very important to the city of Pontiac in my district, and that's the $50 million film incentive. I'm happy to see that this body has chosen to include in the budget this proven method and incentive that creates thousands of jobs across our state while diversifying our economy. But the positives in this bill do not outweigh three unacceptable negatives. First, this budget is built around the huge tax increases that were imposed on individuals in this state over the course of the past two years. These tax increases have only recently been discovered by Michigan families as they prepared their taxes over the past number of months for the 2012 tax year. And they have imposed substantial and often unbearable burdens on middle class and lower income families in our state. We suddenly discovered over $400 million in previously unknown revenues for the coming fiscal year. That was an opportunity to build a budget that all of us could be proud of, a budget that provided needed tax relief to those Michigan families and individuals who are struggling under the burden of tax increases over the past two years. It was built largely by the fact that we obviously, and I say we uh, figuratively because I wasn't here at the time that these tax increases were imposed, but this sudden newfound surplus money was the result of obviously imposing too big of tax increases and unnecessary tax increases on Michigan families and individuals. And I want to remind this body that that tax revenue is not our money, it's the money of the people of this state. And when we unexpectedly come across hundreds of millions of dollars in tax revenue, it should be returned to the people of this state, particularly when those people are struggling under a new tax burden that was imposed just two years ago by this body. Second, and as has been noted by some of my colleagues, this budget jeopardizes not only our state's adherence to the Common Core curriculum standards, but also could potentially jeopardize uh, the ability of a number of school districts to sustain themselves in light of the No Child Left Behind law. And as a result, that putting in jeopardy the Common Core curriculum, and potentially worse, jeopardizes the future of young people. The Common Core curriculum is critically important to our young people's future and their ability to compete in the global economy. We need to raise the bar for young people across the state if we're serious about preparing them and our state for economic, future, for economic success in the future. And by putting the Common Core standards in harm's way, we're putting our children in harm's way. And third is the fact that this budget does not accept federal money to expand Medicaid. This is an instance where I and many of my colleagues agree with our governor, and he's tried to do the right thing by pushing for Medicaid expansion. And yet this body has refused to include the acceptance of those federal dollars in this budget. Not only is that a failure to empower small businesses and individuals for success, but it's also turning down money that would free up more than $200 million in our general fund. That's over $200 million that could be used for tax relief or that could be invested in needed education for our young people and for the future economic success of our state. It's disappointed that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle decided to put primary politics before sound public policy that will advance our state and move our society forward for all of Michiganders, families, and individuals. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.